To be or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against the sea of troubles, and by opposing them, to die. Excerpt from Hamlet, Act 3, Scene 1, by William Shakespeare. When you're immersed in a game, you feel at ease. It's why we play games, to have fun, to escape, to explore, or to pass time. You play as someone else or yourself, and you can fully explore and live the digital life you're given control of to the fullest. Games are great for immersion like that, more so than movies and TV shows. The beautiful world of Elden Ring is beautiful because you're walking through it. Sure, pretty much every frame of this game can literally be put in an art museum because you're pretty much playing inside of a painting, but it only hits as hard because you're controlling it as a three-dimensional plane. If you're watching Elden Ring as a movie, it probably wouldn't hit as hard. Games have this amazing capability of making you feel things as you're controlling what goes on. Unfortunately, not every game utilizes this. They'll just play a cutscene for an emotional moment or something. Enter Nier Automata. This game utilized the player's control and used it against them in the best possible way. You are about to enter a zone filled with massive spoilers for Nier Automata. Not gonna sugarcoat it. Click away from the video if you haven't beaten Nier Automata yet. This video isn't about the game itself, but about the philosophy and the masterful design of 2B's final moments. Yora number 2 Type B, aka 2B, is one of three protagonists of Nier Automata. 2B is an android created by Yora an elite military organization designed to protect the remaining members of humanity and to reclaim Earth from hostile machine lifeforms. 2B is a battle unit suited for combat, and she is the first character you play as. Her name is a reference to a quote from William Shakespeare's Hamlet, the same quote I featured at the start of the video. To be or not to be. Get it? To be or not to be. It's genius because that's literally the point of her character. At the start of the game, 2B is sent to Earth to investigate a Goliath-class threat. She's tasked with teaming up with a scanner android 9S. The Goliath possesses a great challenge and the two decide to use their trump cards, the black box. This is a last resort attack that destroys them and their surroundings. This is where she really gets to know 9S, and this is where their friendship is formed. They are robots, which means they can easily regenerate with all their memories. The reboot at the bunker, the Yora HQ in space, they're sent back to Earth, this time to investigate. As the game progresses, the development of 9S's character goes on rapidly, while 2B's character stays consistent and the same. 9S is talking constantly, expressing emotions, showing curiosity, and trying to interact with 2B. 2B keeps shooting him down every time. When he asks a question, she tells him to focus on the mission. When he brings something up, she tells him it's not vital to their task. When he talks to 2B, she ignores him or tells him to be quiet. When he shows emotion, 2B tells him to stop. They have this sort of contrast between them. Slowly though, 2B becomes more open. At one point, 9S asks her to call him Nines, which is a preferred nickname. 2B obviously refuses to call him this. Later on, she'll slip up and accidentally call him Nines, but then she'll refuse to admit it. She starts getting closer to him. Later on, they actually for real become friends. When they reach an abandoned mall, 9S introduces the concept of shopping, and the two promise each other that they would go shopping together someday. I'm explaining all of this because it makes a certain moment of 2B's story hit a lot harder. At some point, 9S is captured by a lifeform named Adam. 2B manages to save him, but his body is damaged beyond repair, and he's forced to reboot at the bunker. While rebooting, he encounters a glitch. Upon inspection, he discovers a disturbing truth. A bunch of stuff goes down, and all of a sudden, a virus starts going around. This virus turns androids hostile towards each other, and spreads quickly. 2B and 9S try to contact the bunker, but it is impossible. They decide to reboot directly at the bunker and report to the commander themselves. As they report, the commander doesn't believe them. 2B and 9S are accused of being infected themselves, and right before they're apprehended, the virus hits the bunker. Conveniently, the commander, 9S, and 2B are perfectly fine. 
Before escaping, the commander reveals that humanity is actually already extinct. Everything was a lie. The council, humans on the moon, everything. 2B and INS are ordered to return to Earth, while the commander accepts her fate and goes down with the bunker. Now everything is lost. Androids can no longer reboot. The virus is going nuts on Earth. 2B and INS are separated upon landing. They just learned that humanity is extinct. And to add to this, 2B meets her fate in the most painful way possible. Everything that lives is designed to end. We are perpetually trapped in a never-ending spiral of life and death. Is this a curse? Or some kind of punishment? I often think about the god who blessed us with this cryptic puzzle and wonder if we'll ever have the chance to kill him. As I mentioned before, the quote to be or not to be inspired to be's name. It also reflects her character. I also mentioned before that the quote comes from Shakespeare's Hamlet. The quote is said during an act when a character is contemplating suicide. It's about whether or not it's better to live or die. These are the same things that 2B was weighing near her death. Although she pretty much just decides, yep, I'm dying, fuck thinking about it. 2B had contracted the virus upon landing back on Earth. She decided that her life was no longer worth it and she should head over to a secluded area to succumb to the virus without having it spread to anyone else. This is where the game gets painful. Not only is the context of the story making you feel desperate, but even the gameplay is. As you land, you're harassed by machines. They're everywhere. All of a sudden, 2B starts glitching out as the virus starts damaging her. You can't move, you can't attack, you can't jump, you can only shoot with pod and limp around like a hopeless insect waiting to die. As you try to make it to the secluded area to die, you run into lots of machines, and they're always the weakest ones. The game doesn't put any strong enemies in your way, only the weak ones, but it hurts so much more. 2B is a unit that used to mow through hundreds of these things, and now she can't even land a hit. Throughout the game, these smaller machines were truly pitiful. They were insanely easy to kill, but here you can't even damage a single one, and you're constantly being harassed by them. The tables have turned. For the first time in this game, you feel sorry. As you go on, things get worse and worse. Your hearing goes out, 2B continues to wail in pain, more and more machines start showing up, you can't jump so you can't really accurately follow the map, soon you start losing vision. Visual and audio glitches start ramping up as 2B approaches her destination. Seriously, it gets really bad. Once you make it, you're attacked by infected androids. Luckily, A2 shows up to help. Once the androids are taken care of, 2B asks A2 to take her memories. She also asks A2 to kill her so the virus won't spread. This is the last thing we see before the game switches back to 9S. As 9S, you have to find 2B and reunite with her. Unfortunately, it's too late. 2B dies. And that secluded area I was talking about? It was the mall that they had planned to visit once the war was over. So many factors contribute to make this the saddest death in Nier. Automata in general is a very sad game set in a very sad world. I wrote this video because I wasn't sure how, how they made a character's death such a work of art. This is the greatest tragedy which made Nier Automata legendary.